Christmas, the birth of the Messiah, it's the most important event in human history. On today's program, a Jewish perspective on the greatest story ever told. All this and more on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice. This is a program to help you to better understand the Jewish roots of your faith and what God is doing today with the land and people of Israel. Today is our holiday show and we are in the holiday spirit. Just look around at this beautiful set. We are going to talk about the most important event in human history, the birth of the Messiah the story of God becoming flesh and dwelling among us. This is the gospel, the good news. What do Jewish people believe about the Christmas story? Do Jewish believers in Jesus celebrate Christmas? Well, I'm going to be talking about that on today's show. But before I do, I have a friend in the studio with me, and he's the host of another program that you've likely seen, Discovering the Jewish Jesus. He's also a Jewish believer, and he's here to share his testimony of how he discovered Jesus, Yeshua, as his Messiah. And he's also going to be talking to us about some practical ways of deepening and strengthening our relationship with God, your relationship with God. Please welcome Rabbi Kurt Schneider. (laughs) Shalom, brother. Happy holidays. Great to have you. Welcome. Rabbi, welcome to Jewish Voice. It's always a joy to meet other Jewish believers. You have a really amazing testimony, and I so enjoyed our time over lunch before the program today. Just talk about your childhood a little bit and how you found uh, Jesus as your Messiah. Well, Rabbi, like many uh, Jewish uh, people today, my identity uh, as a Jew is very much uh, cultural, but not so much oriented in terms of a relationship with God. Went to synagogue, bar mitzvah in a conservative temple, but really never... In Cleveland, very in, in, Jewish yes, area. in, in Cleveland. Cleveland, very Jewish area. But I would never really was taught about having a relationship with God, how he could be my friend, etc. And at the age of 18 years old, I was going through a very difficult time in life. I was going through a bit of identity uh, crisis. I really built my, my uh, high school years on uh, athletics. I was a wrestler, and I kind of lived it, ate it, drank it, slept it, and that's all I thought about. I never really thought beyond it. But uh, when it ended, it was like suddenly I didn't know who I was. I went off to college, uh, thought about becoming a lawyer, but realized that that too would end one day. And so I was really looking for something permanent in life, but didn't know what it was. And after about two years of of just being in pain, one night the Lord supernaturally revealed himself to me as Jesus in a vision, Rabbi Bernice in the middle of the night. Well, talk about this vision, and I think it's absolutely amazing. And I want to point out, no, no one shared the gospel with you. You had never read the scriptures. Many Christians have this misconception that we Jews know the scriptures. Right. Well, we don't, right? Absolutely but, true. But give us the background and just talk about that vision. It's an amazing vision that, that you had. So it was during this phase of my life, I was really, really becoming spiritually awakened. And uh, one night I went to sleep, as you had said, a Rabbi Bernus, no one had ever witnessed to me. I had never read the New Testament. All my friends were Jewish, knew nothing about Jesus. I never thought about Jesus one way or the other. And uh, in 1978, at the age of 20 years old, wasn't on drugs, the Lord supernaturally awoke me from my sleep one summer night. And I I was uh, translated from a state of just being sound asleep to a state of still having my eyes closed, but I was conscious all of a sudden. And in that state, I had a vision of Jesus on the cross. As an American, I knew enough to know that the person on the cross was Jesus. I knew it was. It was in color. I could see the terrain. There were people looking on from the distance. As I read about later in the New Testament, that as he was being crucified, they looked on from the distance. Of course, I didn't know that at the time. I believe, Rabbi, I was literally translated back in time 2,000 years to witness the sight of the crucifixion. And while this was going on, yeah, a ray of red light from straight through the sky beamed down on Yeshua's, Jesus' head. Wow, that is beautiful. Yeah. No, no one sharing just out of the clear blue, the Lord reveals himself in this way. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. That is good. So what happened? You woke up the next day? Well, actually, uh, right when that happened, I got out of my bed instantly after it happened. Because again, when it happened, I was conscious. So immediately I got out of my bed, and somehow I just knew that God had revealed himself to me. And so I went back to sleep, and the next morning I woke up, told my parents about it. I was so in my own world, I thought they were going to be excited too, because I was so thrilled. But I had no idea what I was about to face. 
How, what was the reaction? Well, the reaction uh, for the first uh, few weeks was, was pretty much silent. They didn't react, but when they saw I was serious about it, someone eventually told me, you need to go get a New Testament, because I was going around talking about this all over the place. Got a New Testament, started devouring it, and when my parents saw that I was serious, they became very concerned. They actually hired a famous deprogrammer from California to come to Cleveland, Ohio. My dad told me we were going to go talk to somebody about opening a business. We went to a hotel, walked into a normal hotel room, the door closed behind me. There were three guys in the room. I was trapped. It was three guys that, that were hired from my parents. They took me to California, put me in a rehabilitation house for a couple of weeks, trying to get me uh, wow, to step for out. for a couple of weeks. Yep. So a lot of rejection. And I want people to realize the cost of, of being a Jewish believer and embracing Jesus, Yeshua as Messiah. Our people just don't understand. That's true. And I always consider it a blessing. I never want anybody to feel sorry for me because I'm always so blessed to share in Jesus' uh, persecutions and sufferings because it gives us the identity that we belong to him. And look how he's using you. Amen. Hey, this is our holiday show, so I want you to talk as a Jewish believer about how you relate to Christmas, how you understand Christmas. Well, my wife is Gentile, and I lead a congregation that consists of many, many Gentiles. And so I try to bring in uh, the culture of Christmas, and I can celebrate uh, Christmas, Rabbi Burnus, as a Jewish person, because to me it's the fulfillment of Messianic prophecy. To me, the celebration of Christmas is the fulfillment of the prophecies in Isaiah. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So if we can celebrate the birth of Israel, we certainly can be Jewish and celebrate the birth of the Jewish Messiah. That's the meaning of the season. That's the reason for the season. I want to congratulate you, Mazal Tov. You've written a new book, Awakening to Messiah. This starts off with your testimony and then moves on to some very practical lessons that the Holy Spirit taught you. Just give us a brief overview of this. God uh, critically brought me to a, a season to just wait on Him. And for over a year, Rabbi, all I did was wait on God. I listened to, to worship music and just every day for eight hours or more, just sat before the Lord doing nothing. And I knew that the Lord was calling me to do this. And God really changed my heart during this time. And uh, I eventually got to the place after doing this for seven, eight, nine months. I said, Lord, I know you call me to do this, but uh, am I just being irresponsible at this point? I mean, I gave all my responsibilities away at the Messianic congregation. I shepherded as many as I could and was just sitting before the Lord hours a day. I said, I said, God, I said, Father, if there's a check in the mailbox when I go out to the mailbox, I'm going to know that you want me to just continue to sit before you and you're going to provide for the financial needs of my family. Went to the mailbox, Rabbi, there was a check. So for over a year, I just sat before the Lord. And this book, mm. Awakening to Messiah, really is about the lessons I learned just sitting before the Lord like Mary at Jesus' feet. There's nothing like that just receiving revelation. That's it. That's what the prophets did. That's how they wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. One of the things I love about the book is you give practical advice on how people can develop a greater awareness of the Holy Spirit within them. Can you just touch on that for a minute? Yes, I think, uh, I think uh, the, the, the first thing would be to just reiterate what I said, to just take time in our lives, whether it's an hour a day, a half hour a day, first thing in the morning, rather than just running out to work, just sit before the Lord, have some beautiful worship music playing, peaceful music, not, you know, wild, you know, just peaceful music, and just say, Lord, just help me to become aware that your Holy Spirit's in me. Don't ask him for anything else but that. To become aware of the reality that God's Spirit is literally in us. I think we're so focused on the outer realm of life that we're disconnected from the reality that His Spirit's in us. And as we get disconnected from the outer by just being still before the Lord, to focus on the fact that He's really in us, we're better than able to discern the movement and the voice of the Holy Spirit within says that Yeshua, Jesus, only did what he, what he saw the yes. Father doing. Well, I love the book because it, it not only shares your testimony, but gives practical steps for growing in into, intimacy with the Lord. And folks, that's what it's all about, a relationship with the living God, intimacy with a God who has revealed himself to us and we've been born from above. Uh, I really encourage you to get it. How can people get the book, Rabbi? They can get the book uh, through discoveringthejewishjesus.com, our website. Uh, they can get it by calling 800-240-1303. And it should be released in the, uh, uh, probably on the shelves by the time that we air in, uh, in Christian bookstores. Give an address quickly, too. Uh, the address would be P.O. Box 777. That's the right P.O. Box. That's the right one. I, nobody <laughs> will forget that one. Blissfield, B-L-I-S-S-F-I-E-L-D, Michigan, uh, 
49, oh, I don't want to say the zip code. You guys have put the graphic up for the okay. zip code. Well, God it's great you. to have you on the program. Right. Rabbi Kurt Schneider, everyone. You. Thank you so much. And we have much more ahead. Stay with us. At Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the true Messiah. To the Jew first and also to the nations. One way we do this is by locating and ministering to the physical needs of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. But even more important than the medical help we give, our practical help opens the door for us to share our faith. Today, we are just weeks away from our next medical clinic in Ethiopia to help the impoverished Jewish community there. Our volunteer medical professionals will provide free medical, dental, and eye care to thousands, many of whom have never seen a doctor or dentist. We urgently need the help of friends like you to raise the funds needed for this clinic. Will you help us to help these precious people? Every gift, large or small, will make a difference in someone's life. If you're able to send a gift of $100 or more, we will send you this beautifully crafted Jerusalem cityscape with a unique design made just for Jewish voice. It's an absolutely exquisite representation of the ancient holy city and an excellent reminder of how important it is to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to let Israel know they are not alone. You will enjoy displaying this piece in your home or your office. In addition to the cityscape, we'll also send you Jewish Voices two-toned keychain with our logo, a Star of David with a sheaf of wheat, representing the harvest. On one side is the important reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and on the other is Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. This useful little keychain will be a constant reminder to keep Israel and the Jewish people in your prayers and of your investment into the lives of some very needy Jewish people. If you're unable to send $100, then please be as generous as possible and we'll send you a Jewish Voice keychain for your gift of any amount. Please call, click, or write now. When you respond, you'll be providing life-saving medical help to very needy Jewish people and the cityscape and keychain will be an inspiration to you and a reminder of your partnership with us to demonstrate His love. Please call, click, or write today. I love the holidays. I love the whole month of December for that matter. We have, uh, we have Hanukkah and we have Christmas and it's just a wonderful uh, season. And I hope you're having a great, great holiday season. I, I, I wanna remind you as you've heard so many times, I'm sure, and we, but we need to always remember this. Christmas is about the reason for the season. It's not about giving gifts. It's not just about the celebration, but it's about the greatest story ever told. It's about the birth of the Messiah. It's about God becoming man. It's about the Messiah emptying himself for us and leaving heaven to come and dwell among us. I'm asked often if Jewish believers, if Messianic Jews celebrate Christmas, and my answer is that some do and some don't, but all Jewish believers in Jesus, all of us believe in the importance of the birth of the Messiah, that this was uh, the son of the living God coming to live among us, God himself in human form. Some Jewish believers believe that he was born during Sukkot. It's based on John chapter one, where we're told that he dwelt among us, literally in Greek, he tabernacled among us. Sukkot is the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, it's, it's during the uh, winter season. And so many Messianic Jews choose to celebrate the birth of the Messiah during Sukkot, while others may um, celebrate Christmas. Either way, we all believe in the birth of the Messiah and the importance of God dwelling among us and his son being uh, born, uh, coming to earth. Now, there's two scriptures that I absolutely love that remind me of the holidays. And the reason I love these so much is because they're from the Old Testament. They're from the Jewish scriptures, from the prophets, and they're written hundreds of years before the Messiah was ever born. And they specifically talk about God becoming man or about the birth of the Messiah. First of all, Isaiah chapter nine, and many of you love this, I know. Look at verse six with me. We're told that unto us a child is born, 
to us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders. Not just the government of nations, but the, the, but the government of the kingdom of God. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Doesn't just, just this remind you of the holidays of the Prince of Peace, one of the great titles of the Messiah, the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. And we're told specifically that this child would be born and his name would be the Everlasting Father. This is God come in human flesh, dwelling among us. He is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Oh, this is so glorious. When you think about this, written hundreds of years before the Messiah was ever born, that he would actually send his son, God himself, to dwell among us, the Prince of Peace, so that we could receive eternal peace, everlasting peace, a peace that passes all understanding. The other scripture that I love so much is from the book of Micah, chapter 5. This is a great scripture that speaks about Bethlehem. Now understand that Bethlehem uh, in biblical days was a little village. It was a pass-through place. Nobody ever went to Bethlehem for any specific reason. It was just a little village that you stopped through to refuel your car. I'm just, I'm just kidding. But uh, in, in Hebrew, it's very significant because Bethlehem comes from two Hebrew words, Beit, which means house, and Lechem, which is bread. This is the house of bread, and it's no coincidence that God chose Bethlehem, Beit Lechem, for the bread of life to uh, come into the world. You, Bethlehem, or Beit Lechem, although you are small among uh, the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who, who will rule over Israel, or be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. I love this prophecy. Again, written hundreds of years before the Messiah was ever born, telling us specifically that the Messiah had to be born in this little village, this small village of Beit Lechem, first of all, and that his goings forth, his existence would be from old, from everlasting. And although we're not specifically told uh, of the divinity, it doesn't specifically point out the divinity of Messiah, the fact is we're told that he would be pre-existent. And the rabbis understood that this was a prophecy of the Messiah. So we have these prophecies hundreds of years before the Messiah was ever born, telling us that the Messiah would be God himself, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, and that he would be born specifically in the village of Beit Lechem, the house of bread, and that he would be pre-existent. And that's exactly what we read in the New Testament, that he was with God in the beginning, that he was God, and that he came to this earth to die for us. The birth of the Messiah, the greatest story in human history, whether you celebrated Sukkot or here during this season, it doesn't matter. Just remember the reason for the season. Happy holidays. At Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the true Messiah. To the Jew first and also to the nations. One way we do this is by locating and ministering to the physical needs of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. But even more important than the medical help we give, our practical help opens the door for us to share our faith. Today, we are just weeks away from our next medical clinic in Ethiopia to help the impoverished Jewish community there. Our volunteer medical professionals will provide free medical, dental, and eye care to thousands, many of whom have never seen a doctor or dentist. We urgently need the help of friends like you to raise the funds needed for this clinic. Will you help us to help these precious people? Every gift, large or small, will make a difference in someone's life. If you're able to send a gift of $100 or more, we will send you this beautifully crafted Jerusalem cityscape with a unique design made just for Jewish voice. It's an absolutely exquisite representation of the ancient holy city and an excellent reminder of how important it is to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to let Israel know they are not alone. You will enjoy displaying this piece in your home or your office. In addition to the cityscape, we'll also send you Jewish Voice's two-toned keychain with our logo, a Star of David with a sheaf of wheat. 
representing the harvest. On one side is the important reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and on the other is Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. This useful little keychain will be a constant reminder to keep Israel and the Jewish people in your prayers and of your investment into the lives of some very needy Jewish people. If you're unable to send $100, then please be as generous as possible and we'll send you a Jewish Voice keychain for your gift of any amount. Please call, click, or write now. When you respond, you'll be providing life-saving medical help to very needy Jewish people. And the Cityscape and Keychain will be an inspiration to you and a reminder of your partnership with us to demonstrate His love. Please call, click, or write today. Now, since 2010, we've been providing free medical clinics in Manipur, India, to the Bene Menashe, perhaps descendants of the lost tribe of Menashe. Here's a closer look at these amazing people and why they're so desperately in need of our help. And we're here in a little town called Chirachampur in Manipur, India, which is in the way far northeastern quadrant up near Burma. We've brought 30 some odd healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses, dentists, and we've also hired about 150 local volunteers to help us set up a one week clinic in this hospital. Jewish Voice sent out over 30 medical professionals, support staff, and prayer volunteers to reach this lost tribe of Israel, lost to the world, but not to God. In our short time there, and with your help, Jewish Voice was able to reach more than 6,400 people with medical help and with the good news of Yeshua, Jesus, their Messiah. It's amazing to see how God can bring people all over from our diverse country on one trip to minister to people we don't know at our own expenses at times, time away from our family, but I don't think twice about it. There are so many things I can make symptomatically better, but I can't cure, I can't fix. So it was nice to help direct them to the one who could. While the Lord was using these dedicated doctors and nurses to bring physical healing to the people, he was also revealing himself as the great redeemer of the whole house of Israel. While the prayer room is voluntary to those who come for aid, it remains the busiest room in the clinic. Our prayer volunteers pray for the sick, stand with the burdened, share the good news of the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, to these wonderful people, and no one leaves untouched. I feel that this is taking part in prophecy, and I feel so blessed to be a part of it, um, that we can be a part of living in prophecy, that the times that we are living in are so special because God is recalling his people back to himself, and that not only spiritually, but physically as well, that he's calling the people, Jewish people, tribes from all over the world back to Israel, but at the same time calling them spiritually back to himself. And that's where we come in, where we can share the good news of Yeshua with them and share that he has come as reigning king in their hearts, that they can receive that now as well as go back to Israel and that we can be a part in sharing that with them. A lot of people ask me why I do this. They say it's crazy when you could be in your comfortable bed, but I, I couldn't not do it. When you see the people's faces, when you've, when you've ministered to somebody or pulled a tooth that saved a life, or, or when you're at the exit gate and the little ladies come up and hug you and they're so blessed. You know, I can't not come, I'm compelled to come. If you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you're a dentist, if you're an eye specialist, I, there's, the need is so great. So please consider coming. We would love to have you. What a blessing to be able to bring medical aid and most importantly, the good news of Yeshua to the B'nai Menashe. Up next, how you can bless the B'nai Menashe and other Jewish people who need our help. We'll be right back. Coming this summer, July 13th through July 20th. 
join Jonathan Burness and his family on a spectacular Alaskan cruise. You'll experience teachings and praise and worship in some of the most breathtaking and rugged scenery in the world. This is a voyage you won't want to miss. Be sure to join us in beautiful Alaska. Since 1967, for over 45 years, Jewish Voice has been proclaiming the gospel. We share with the Jew first, but we reach out to all people around the world. We've made it our mission to find Jewish communities in need, and we've been able to reach out to them with medical care, eye care, dental care, and most importantly, the gospel. And it's because of your financial support that we are making a difference in their lives. Now, I have a, a, some wonderful little gifts that I want to send you as our way of saying thank you for enabling us to reach out to Jewish people in need. I was wondering, what should we offer for the holidays as our way of saying thank you? And I thought of this. This is a beautiful Jerusalem landscape. I actually saw this in Israel and uh, we had it custom made for Jewish voice. Th this is an impressive display. It's silver plated with gold uh, trim, uh, a beautiful, beautiful landscape of the city of Jerusalem. And it's a great reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It, it's really heavy, it's absolutely beautiful. We have one in our house and we'd like to make sure you get one in your house also. And uh, this is just our way of saying thank you. Uh, we also have this beautiful uh, Jerusalem keychain that has our logo on it with the Star of David and the wheat. And on one side, there's also a reminder again to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And the other, we have Psalm 4610, which reminds us that God is in control. It says, be still and know that I am God. This is a beautiful uh, little keychain. It, it's a great t tool that can be used to share your faith. And uh, we want you to know that your gift changes the lives of Jewish people and all people around the world. You can make an eternal investment in the lives of Jewish people right now by helping us to provide free medical care, free dental care, free eye care, and most importantly, the gospel, the good news of Jesus the Messiah. These are people that will die without your help. So I want you to call or log on to our website and we'll get this gift right out to you. And I want to get you the keychain for anything that you can do today. And on behalf of all of us at Jewish Voice and the thousands of people that we help each year, thank you. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. I want to wish each and every one of you a wonderful holiday season. Enjoy your friends, your family, and the peace of Yeshua. And until next week, as I always do, I want to leave you with these words to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible promises they shall prosper that love thee. On behalf of all of us at Jewish Voice, this is Jonathan Bernis saying shalom. God bless you and happy holidays. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you.